let's discuss the transport processes across the membrane and through the membrane transport processes uh, across the cell basically all the mem uh, transports are across the membrane because uh, they are crossing the membrane and in that sense uh, they are all across the membrane but some they actually invade the membrane and go through the membrane they, are, they will be called as transport through the membrane and the others which cross the membrane but without actually invading the membrane without actually going through the membrane so they will be categorized as transport across the membrane uh, transport across the membrane would be endocytosis and exocytosis and transport through the membrane um, we will discuss uh, osmosis diffusion and active transport so let's uh, talk about these transport processes one by one transport across the membrane endocytosis and exocytosis let's start the first one uh, endocytosis uh, basically, these transports across the membrane occur uh, that, by formation of vesicles. The uh, transported substance is inside a vesicle. Therefore, these are also called as vesicular transports. And uh, for vesicular transports, there is also one more word called as cytopemptis. So let's see these vesicular transports, endocytosis, uh, which substances are internalized by endocytosis, those which cannot uh, pass through the membrane by diffusion, uh, for instance large molecules, macromolecules, particulate matter, uh, foreign substances, bacteria, these substances they enter the cells by uh, endocytosis two types based on whether a substance is uh, solid or liquid it's either called phagocytosis when solids enter the cell so it's uh, also called as cell eating example um, bacteria entry into the neutrophils uh, phagocytosis and the other one pinocytosis when liquids enter the cell so that's also called as cell drinking example um, soluble proteins enter the cell by pinocytosis in their dissolved forms they enter the cell by pinocytosis apart from this there are other types of endocytosis based on how it occurs the mechanism uh, is different so first one based on the mechanisms this is how you classify endocytosis constitutive endocytosis Constitutive endocytosis uh, means it will occur continuously by virtue of constitution of the cell uh, there would be a continuous uh, endocytosis example most of the vitamins enter the cell by constitutive endocytosis second more commonly known is clathrin mediated endocytosis receptor mediated endocytosis or clathrin mediated endocytosis well what happens is there is a pit formed in the membrane and there are receptors in this pit the substance to be internalized will 
identify the receptors and bind with those receptors and beneath the membrane there is this fibrillar protein called as clathrin so this is clathrin mediated endocytosis or receptor mediated endocytosis what happens is that this substance will bind with its receptors and the pit will invaginate it will become deep and the substance entering this invagination so now having entered this invagination and clathrin is uh, helping form all this formation of vesicle eventually there would be a neck uh, there would be a uh, collar formed around the neck region and then this part of the membrane will be pinched away pinched off from the membrane so a vesicle has been formed with uh, the substance inside the vesicle that's uh, clathrin mediated endocytosis now there is a clathrin cage around this vesicle a clathrin cage which is called as a clathrin triskelion it has three legs and the dissolution of clathrin cage needs atp and in that sense this type of transport has been called as active transport in the sense that it needs atp and the other thing that should be noted is uh, the the surface area of the membrane will decrease temporarily because some part of the membrane has been pinched away what are the examples of clathrin mediated endocytosis ldl entry into the steroidogenic cells that's a very commonly known example you see a steroid synthesizing cell it's going to form steroid hormones uh, from cholesterol so how this cholesterol is internalized into the cells is that the circulating ldls will identify the receptors in the membrane of these uh, steroidogenic cells and then those ldl will bind with the receptors in the membrane of these cells and finally internalized by endocytosis so that's a uh, a very commonly known example of clathrin mediated or receptor mediated endocytosis a uh, transferrin bind to its receptor is also internalized into the cells by this mechanism second a third type of uh, mechanism based endocytosis is caveolin mediated endocytosis now instead of clathrin there is a protein caveolin in the membrane you see the depressions in the membrane are called as caveolae and associated with these depressions is the protein caveolin and when this mediates the endocytosis it's called as caveolin mediated endocytosis another name that is given to it is uh, potocytosis some authors call it podocytosis a common example folate entry into the cells occurs by caveolin mediated endocytosis or uh, potocytosis so these are uh, the examples and mechanisms of endocytosis the other type of transport across the membrane exocytosis when the substances are thrown out of the cells now therefore this is also called as cell vomiting cell vomiting and uh, if the liquids are thrown out of the cell then it is also sometimes called as reverse pinocytosis when liquids are being thrown out two types one constitutive exocytosis when not it occurs continuously no receptor needed or no uh, signal needed for it what's the example mucus secretion occurs in this manner mucus secreting cells uh, goblet cell uh, in the small intestine they se they secrete mucus in a continuous fashion and it's the con constitutive exocytosis immunoglobulin secretion 
antibody secretion by the plasma cell you know b lymphocyte it forms uh, the antibodies and when when it has to secrete those antibodies then it will form the plasma cell and plasma cell will continuously secrete the antibodies so it's a constitutive exocytosis the second one is second type of exocytosis is regulated exocytosis this is called as regulated membrane transport or regulated membrane transfer and all the types that we know commonly belong to this category for example neurotransmitter secretion at the synapse acetylcholine secretion in the neuromuscular junction hormone secretion by the hormone synthesizing cells insulin secretion for example all the peptide hormone secretion these are secreted by regulated exocytosis why it's called exocytosis you can see here that there is a vesicle with the neurotransmitter when impulse arrives at the synaptic terminal first the calcium channels will open and the ecf calcium will enter so calcium levels will rise and uh, then the vesicle will migrate towards the membrane fuse with the membrane and will discharge the neurotransmitter by exocytosis so it has been tightly regulated and in that sense it's called as a regulated membrane transport uh, one thing that you have noted is that all the processes of exocytosis they will need an increased intracytoplasmic calcium calcium enters and then the vesicle moves towards the membrane and fuses with the membrane and releases the contents but there are only two exceptions to this rule there are two places where decrease calcium decrease intracytoplasmic calcium causes exocytosis those two exceptions are one is parathormone secretion by the pth synthesizing cells uh, you know when serum calcium is decreased uh, its intracellular signal is in the form of decrease intracellular calcium and then it results in parathormone secretion and the second example is renin secretion renin secretion by the jg cell this also occurs when there is a decrease intracellular calcium because when there is a decrease blood volume and decrease blood pressure that is when renin is going to be secreted what's the signal for a, 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 a renin secretion to occur is in the form of a decrease intracellular calcium the signal for decreased blood volume and decreased blood pressure so these are the transports across the membrane vesicular transports 